It's Monday, April 23rd, 2012. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, Alex explores the environmental dictatorship taking place on land, sea, air, and even in outer space, as he has breaking environmental news from Climate Depot's Mark Moreno. Then, are celebrities being targeted by the TSA to condition the public for invasive grope downs? Plus tonight's top stories and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Again, thank you for joining us on this Monday edition. I look at the news as it unfolds, and it's like broadcasting during a war, because it is. Tiny, inbred global elites waging war against the natural order, against the free market, with their attempt to establish a global monopoly of a handful of central banks known as the New World Order. And our first grouping of stories really will take up most of the evening. And it's the environmental global dictatorship being established. It is the Agenda 21 UN plan written by the mega banks on record to create global zoning to shut down human activity unless you're a global licensed entity, then you're completely exempt and then can engage in any environmental crime you could imagine. It is about going after people for the air they breathe, uh, what we exhale, this is a toxic waste, carbon dioxide, and it is about creating a total government state uh, to impoverish and enslave the people. Here is Human Events, respected newspaper, getting into Agenda 21. And it says, planning a vacation this summer to Miami's Biscayne Bay for a little fishing. It's banned. Uh, having a boat banned. Uh, you are only allowed to go out to your knees uh, in the water. Other beaches are being completely shut down. Uh, they're shutting down uh, the California sequoias. Can't drive into those. Huge areas of public lands, 80 plus percent of the West is government land. Not really public, though, now. The bankers want you to get used to not using it so they can develop it and steal it and do other things and sign it away on the fake national debt. Uh, but they're saying you can't even enter many of these areas now. Um, again, you want to lounge on the soft sands of North Carolina's Outer Banks and read the novel, fly a kite with the kids, banned. No, 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 it goes on to read. And they now have no trespassing signs going up in many areas. You're not allowed. Training you that you can't use it. Mark Moreno's coming up to talk about this. Big developments. Uh, it goes on. The park service that operates the Cape Hatteras National Seashore pledged to replace the no trespassing signs with new signs that will read, walk near the water's edge, stay below the high tide line. So you're not allowed to get up high on the beach. and You're not allowed to get more than over your knees in the water. You've got little narrow areas, and there's going to be bureaucrats there uh, to get in your face and to deal with all of this. And it continues. Remember those maps we've shown you with right at half the country, the UN says, off limits in red. The UN Biological Diversity Assessment maps, core reservoirs and core corridors, because they also block around the reservoirs and lakes and rivers, little to no human use. Yellow, highly regulated use. And you've got other uh, constitution-free border zones. Uh, then you've got normal use. You can barely find the green areas there. Uh, Indian reservation, military reservation. So a giant prison grid in America. And, and people are like, oh, they'll never implement that. Oh, really? Multi-thousand dollar a day fines for dust in barns? from hay, but if you want to put out some GMO crops that kill the bugs that we then feed to the humans, it kills bugs, but it's okay for you to eat, that's fine, that's not environmental, that's not a, a, a invasive genetic warfare species of bacteria or viruses. Uh, it continues, in California, Representative Devin Nunn says that by eliminating horseback rides to the backcountry, the National Park Service has essentially blocked the only access that many Americans, including those with disabilities and the elderly, have had to the wilderness. Yeah, you can only walk in a few miles. The new restrictions are the result of a law brought by environmentalists who say the activity may be a threat to nature. Yeah, you heard me right. Losing the permit. See, a permit is a license to do something that is illegal. And then they just stopped giving the permits. How did New York City 50 years ago start banning guns? They said, you got to get a permit. Then they stopped issuing the permits. It's almost impossible to get one. 
It's like getting a permit to the moon or something. Losing the permits means that at least 15 companies that provided horseback rides are out of work this summer, along with an estimated 500 employees. Yeah, I was, as a child, one of my favorite things was to go to national parks and pay and, and get on the horses or mules and go out for the day, eat lunch, down the bottom of the Grand Canyon, come back out. Not anymore when they're done. <laughs> You're like, oh, that'll never happen. The TSA will never stick their hands down your child's pants or take 95-year-old women behind closed doors and rip their clothes off or rob hundreds of people's bags a week at the JFK airport on record. Who do you think wants these jobs? Pedophile perverts. Real men want the woman to desire them and want them and pursue them. That's, that's what's exciting. Only sick filth wants to grow movie star women, and that's coming up. But it's worse. At least those guys want women who are full grown and to put their hands on them and force it on them. That's bad enough. The lowest scum in the world. They don't even want to touch the woman. It's the power. It's the humiliation. It's the children they're after. That's why so many have been busted as pedophiles. Good God, what have we become? And now they're doing warrantless bag checks on street corners all over the country, including Houston, Texas. And when lawyers said, hey, you're violating the Fourth Amendment, the TSA said, go to hell. When, when lawyers said, you're violating the Tenth Amendment, they said, go to hell. Their sacrament is squeezing your genitals. Think about that. Land of the free, home of the brave, pot-bellied pervs are going to rub your wife's breast. They're going to grab her, her cr crotch. They're going to go between her butt cheeks. And if that's not enough, get back. They're going to grab your daughter. And <laughs> It's our country now. And don't you try to go to the seashore. And you're not going to ride horses. And you're not going to enter most of the land, period. It's our country now. It's a new world order. And it's just getting started. We'll secretly arrest citizens if we want to. It's freedom. Don't listen to Alex Jones who warned you about all this as it starts to come true. That's radical. Don't get upset. It's a long article. They're banning everything. Folks, I knew years ago when I'd go to the national parks and have a camera out, and they'd run over and scream at me with hatred. I was at the Grand Canyon and had, had them, we stopped and asked for directions, and she demanded we get out of the car and began screaming at us, saying, you're not supposed to be up here trying to park. And we were just driving around by the hotels. And we're like, well, we just ask you politely where the parking lot is. And I had to be very calm and... <laughs> country's so gone. It's so gone. We're so humiliated. All these scum, all these nobodies want uniforms so they can dominate us and rape us and abuse us and molest us and do everything they do. And it's only going to get worse. Giant hordes of the new armies of the Enviro cops are being created. Hail is being released. The Amish are being arrested. Oh, I've gotten into one article. I've gotten into one article. Where does it end? How bad does the outrage have to get until you start saying no to these scum? I had a feeling I should do a road trip and go speak at some stations and take my children to see national parks because soon you're not going to even get into them unless you pay giant cash to these criminals. It's all part about it's all part of breaking our will. Just like in Europe, they're handing over the Greek islands, you name it, to the very bankers that ripped them off. This is our journey into slavery. This is the social engineering. Let's continue now. Uh, new Big Brother satellite to hunt down carbon criminals. They're already using the old satellites in Australia, New Zealand, Europe, England, U.S., Canada. You know, when people build a barn or something and the Enviro Nazis say they can't or whatever. They're already doing that. But now they got these billion-dollar satellites to, quote, hunt down people that have got a fireplace or burning a fire. Uh, space eaters are being banned in Europe, fireplaces, shingle family dwellings, families are evil. It's just turning loose the greatest scum the earth has ever imagined. Authoritarians who know they are. Anti-human, bloodthirsty, ugly people. When you see these New World Order people and their minions, they're always ugly. They can barely read or write when you actually, they just give themselves professorships. Uh, it, it, it is an army of scum who hate those of us that are virtuous. You must realize those that hate liberty, they hate human destiny. They're afraid to compete with others because they're so miserable and they operate as fervent gangs, a thousand to one, against powerful humans to enslave us. They are the enemy. Get her off the screen. That's, uh, let's get back to the article. These people. Can't look at that. Get it off. It's not funny. She's smiling because she knows, okay? It's all hers. She's got the Rothschilds behind her. Earth is hers. 
Everyone's laying down to it. You guys know when to flash that on screen. You know I can't handle it. I'm like a bull that just saw a red cape. Just get it, keep it off the screen. <laughs> it's not funny, please, God. Okay, continuing here. If we talk about her, she'll just have her video banned anyways. After all, she wrote a letter to the president saying, ban freedom in America. I mean, on record. <laughs> She's like, I'm not saying Medicaid or grab everybody. Even though my paper said that, the other paper's like, get rid of freedom. Authoritarianism's the answer. Okay, continuing. The target is to hunt down environmental violators, said Dudek, adding that the satellite will have the capability to detect methane, that's farting, and they are already in Europe and Canada taxing uh, farting. I'm not kidding, they say it's unnatural. Of course, this is what part of the atmosphere on this planet. What? what? It's true. Meaning farmers whose activity is already policed by a network of spy satellites and drones could face fines and taxes depending on the flatulence levels of their livestock. They're going to tax us for farting and breathing. <laughs> you know it? I mean, you just turn yourself over to a bunch of uh, miscreant globalist minion heads. I mean, heaven help us. And we have good virtuous people who are just like working hard, living their lives, all turned over to the experts. And every, every control freak just runs to take over all the power centers. <sighs> Continuing, we have a video clip of this up on Infowars.com. Professor depicts blood dripping knife machine gun while talking about population control and getting rid of humanity. Uh, and again, keeping track of you there uh, with the little uh, loving, loving satellites. <laughs> And I guess uh, with the satellites, uh, they can then uh, show us machine guns and guns and all the rest of it uh, to uh, take good care of us. And again, you can read that article at Infowars.com. And I guess with the satellites, they can decide whose house to burn down uh, because uh, that takes us to the next article when they're always talking about how they want to be violent with us. Uh, climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. Let's start keeping track of them. Let's make them pay. And it goes on to talk about burning our houses down. And, and this is just part of the course. You question handing everything over to the green tyrants who aren't green at all, who haven't found a GMO they didn't fall in love with, and uh, your house needs to be burned down. It's just that simple. And again, you're violent if you don't want to have your house burned down. If you think, boy, that sounds authoritarian, they're like, shut up, we'll burn your house down. And shut up, we're having your YouTube video taken down. Sure, our paper said, put you in a mental institution if you don't agree with us. Uh, but your YouTube channel is going to be taken down because I'm magic and said so. And they, and they took the video down. And then we find our other paper. And it says, you know, get rid of freedom, get rid of democracy, and don't let folks vote out their carbon dictatorship. Because, again, these are good people. Uh, continuing, here's another article from the New American. UN seeks new powers to remake world at Rio Sustainability Summit. After all, 20-something years ago, that's where they created the uh, Gen 21 agenda. Transitioning to a green economy, means handing everything over to them, I should add, requires a fundamental shift in the way we think and act. The document explains calling for a greater education, that means brainwashing, information and awareness, efforts to help change individual and collective behavior. Uh, that's what they call brainwashing, as the attorney general would call it, against guns. In lifestyles as well as consumption and production patterns, the agenda will necessitate a serious rethinking of lifestyles in development countries, it notes, because everything's got to go to the globalist. Uh, now, uh, let's uh, continue here with our uh, other real environmental crises. You've got GMO killing many of the bugs, killing humans, every form of cancer, neurological disorder, diabetes. You've got... The estrogen mimickers getting into the water, causing the fish to be multisexual, creating huge problems. And now white nose has just absolutely exploded uh, in different areas of the country and could lead to the extinction of these bats. And they keep acting like they don't know where it's coming from. But it's clearly a fungus, and a lot of these fungal infections are linked to GMO that grows natural bacteria and fungus at a thousand plus times the natural level, and it's causing all sorts of problems in the ecosystem. But hey, a real environmental problem, let's just not worry about it. 
Remember, the Pentagon detonated hundreds of high-powered hydrogen bombs in the upper atmosphere, attempting to blow holes in the atmosphere to see if our atmosphere would escape or catch on fire. So continuing, uh, Bucknell University professor, White Nose Syndrome is unprecedented wildlife disaster with 6.7 million bats already dead. It means the mosquitoes are going to run wild. Scientists believe that fast-spreading disease called White Nose Syndrome could lead to the extinction of some species. This is like bringing smallpox to the new world. It's surely an unprecedented wildlife disaster for North America. And they're trying to find cures for it. Why not find out where it's coming from? Like breast cancer explodes several thousand percentage points in the last 30 years. It's always find a cure, find a cure. How about find the cause? Find the cause. It'd be like if people were getting run over by drag racers on the street, and then they kept having big meetings about find the cure when somebody has been run over by a car and has 20 broken bones. Find the cure to magically fix all these broken bones. Instead of what is doing this to these people? But never fear, we don't need bats, we don't need honeybees. Scientists are calling for bans on specific types of pesticides that internal documents leaked out of the EPA show they knew decades ago killed honeybees. Very small trace amounts. But so what? We're just spraying it on the food so the humans eat it. And there's all these other good pesticides that globalists don't have patents on anymore that they ban. So they use the environmental movement to ban pesticides that aren't as deadly or aren't as synthetic and, and, and modern. And then they bring in the new ones that they know are killing the honeybees. But that's only part of it. The other big studies show it's the pharmacological BT corn and other crops that, again, kill insects that eat the crops. So obviously it's killing honeybees as well, the studies show, when they've studied the intestines or the guts of the bee. Okay, the stomachs of the bee to be technical. So they know that it's attacking the bees and they just don't care because they've got to get their primary target, the humans. This is all eugenics that is taking place. So there is that report. Now, speaking of Monsanto, woman receives anonymous threats after opposing Monsanto, Sophia Gattaca from Argentina, who lost her three-year-old daughter to kidney failure, made a decision to spearhead an anti-Monsanto movement with other mothers of sick children. Monsanto, of course, is a loving biotechnology uh, agrochemical company, which has been polluting the environment and human health with herbicides, pesticides, don't forget Agent Orange, dioxin, genetically modified foods, and other substances for decades. If Satan ran a company, it'd be Monsanto, I would add. Numerous cases have been brought against Monsanto for biological damage and even death, such in as a recent case in which farmers say biotech giant creation spawned devastating birth defects. Well, a lot of the GMO itself, not just the chemicals they use, are causing massive birth defects in rats it's fed to. The TSA is there to condition the public that they're going to set up domestic checkpoints across the country. They're now at bus stations, highways, train terminals, searching bags, violating the Fourth Amendment, violating the Tenth Amendment against states' rights. It's going on in Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, close to where I live in Austin. It's happening all over the world, too. Governments are setting up similar authoritarian goon systems. So the airports have always been a beta test. And we've seen case after case in the U.S. and in England where their TSA system as well prints off digital scans of the naked bodies of TV stars and movie stars and models and ask them out for dates, ask them to sign the documents. That's been going on a while. But in this new development, and I've noticed this the last few months, all over TV, all over print, all over Yahoo, all over CBS, you can see right there, they show well-known people famous movie stars, musicians, you name it, being treated like criminals, having to put their arms out, having their breasts groped. They show it to you. So you understand it's mindless. It's, it's, it, and it's arbitrary and it's against everybody. That we're going to grab your genitals. We're going to grab Jesse Ventura's genitals. We're gonna grab Ron Paul's genitals. We're going to go after everybody and we're going to put you in a microwave scanner, we're going to radiate you, and we're going to touch your body. And there's all these stalkers in people I've been reading now going and getting jobs at the TSA, especially in LAX and other areas, so they can grope you. And every time I fly, if you see a beautiful woman going through, even if they do the body scan, they call them over. Show that Israeli model 
where she described how the woman clearly got off on it and her sexual preference was clear. I mean, just Marcos Morales and Dara McBreen flew out to Georgia a few weeks ago. And at the Austin airport, they wanted to do pat downs on them. Well, first they were opting out of the naked body scanners. So they kept saying, oh, you're an opt out and laughing at them and never checking them, even though the airport wasn't busy and keep coming over and saying, still opting out, still opting out, threatening to make them miss their flight and laughing at them and acting like thugs in a third world country or out of a nightmare science fiction movie. Then they come over and put their gloves on and look at Marcos and say, business or pleasure? And Marco says a little of both. And he goes, God, I get your pleasure and pops the glove. Again, pedophilia off the charts with them, robbing people's bags, hitting on women. It's incredible. Who else wants to grab people's genitals all day? Who else wants to rub men and women's crotches? I mean, I don't care if it was Marilyn Monroe in her height of beauty. And I obviously would be attracted to a woman like that. I would be embarrassed and would not want to put my hands on her without her wanting it. You understand that? I mean, it, it is just anathema. I'm not a rapist. I'm not a molester. I'm not an abuser. I'm not a fondler. I don't go to parks to jump out and grab women. I, I mean, this is incredible. And, and this is the federal psychological warfare chiefs, the globalists. On record, they admit, breaking our will to give our children over to the system to be abused. Top psychologists have said it trains them for pedophilia. But going back through these graphics and these Yahoo news articles here that we're analyzing, look at how Yahoo throws it in everybody's face systematically every day. This is the new voyeurism. So you get into it and say, well, at least the stars have to do it. At least they have to go through this. At least they have to go behind the closed doors and get strip searches as well. I mean, think about it. I mean, this, and look, look, there, go back to that one. There you've got the famous exercise guru, Richard Simmons, who everybody knows since the 70s, 80s, 90s. And there's the woman laughing. And with Ventura, when I've flown with him, I've seen them. They go, it's the governor. It was, it was right out of the South Park episode, but it happened before the South Park episodes. It was literally... Ooh, it's Jesse Ventura. Ooh, God, I want your autograph after this. I don't like this. East Germany. If you know who I am, why are you doing this? I don't like that. Oh, oh. They're like grabbing his testicles. And I'm, I'm sitting there watching, and they go back behind and go, ooh, let me look inside you. I mean, they almost said that. Because <laughs> it was. It was right out of the South Park. And go, East, East Germany. I'm moving out of here, Alex. I'm moving out of here. And they're like, oh, I'm going to get a photo. I mean, I'm just telling you what happened. It was right out of South Park. And then I saw the South Park episode and I was like, I guess everybody's going through this. Or when I was up in um, Wyoming and Billings, it was like these redneck women, these obese redneck women, they were like, some woman had like a two ounce thing from her hotel and, and of shampoo. She's like, what is this? What is this? And I, and I started saying, and, and, and like all these TSA guys with their hands behind their backs looking at me. And she's like, and, and I was fine. I'm just speechless even talking about this. And I, would, I started saying, wait a minute, you're allowed to have up to such and such ounces. And we're like, do you have a problem? And they were just, and then we went through the checkpoint and we got there early. So we stopped and waited a few minutes and they were screaming at people, just egomaniacs wanting to scream at oil field workers' wives at 8 a.m. in Billings, Montana. Get over here. Why do you have this? Why do you have this? But meanwhile, it's people getting to harass celebrities. That's what this is all about. I mean, the guy at Las Vegas, because I wouldn't do the scanners, he goes, oh, Alex Jones, I listened to your show. Listening to it yesterday, by the way. And I go, listen, you just better not touch my private parts because I, I really want to get on the plane. But and he's like, I have administrative rights. Ooh. And, and I mean, and I, literally, I've told the story. He was going, uh, this won't take too long. I'll hurry up. Uh. And I'm just going, what the? <laughs> and then he goes, uh, uh. <laughs> but I mean, with Ventura, they're just like going, oh, let me look back here now. <laughs> this country. I mean, I got to laugh or cry over this. Okay. Um, so it's in your face. It's gladiatorial. They used to throw people to the lions. Now they throw people to the perverts.
I mean, imagine the Aztecs wanted a human sacrifice. Got to give your kids to them. Uh, the Druids wanted you to throw your kids into a bonfire, bone fire, and watch them burn and pop to the gods. Or they'd put you in a big wicker man and set you on fire. Uh, I guess uh, the Romans would take their slaves when the, when the man of the house died and kill them in a gladiatorial fight. That's how gladiators started. The Greeks sacrificed people in a ritualized combat. Every culture does it now because they're getting us ready for the real killing. That's what non-lethal weapons that are really lethal weapons are about, just training you to accept that, the image of being shot at. Now they're just getting us ready. That's why they're upping the power of the taser each time. Now they're just getting us ready to be thrown in to the pot bellies. And that's what they talk about in Clockwork Orange that was based on a novel of where the criminal state hires the street thugs who would be their enemy to feed on the rest of the public. And that's the new system we're under. And so I have watched TSA people look at a former governor, movie star, actor, wrestler, and all say, Governor Ventura, I liked you when you were a wrestler. Can I have an autograph while they grab his genitals? That's America. We are living in a South Park episode. Uh, I have the quotes right here. I got security pat down by a woman at the airport that made me feel very uncomfortable and left no doubt about her sexual preferences, said the 26-year-old top model bomb, uh, blonde bombshell. Yeah, where else do pervs get to have jobs where they get to grab the genitals of, of movie stars and, and uh, models? Where else, where else do you get to grab Ron Paul's genitals? I mean, uh, Sasha Barra Cohen tried that and it didn't work too well. Where else? It's illegal, it's pure bull, but it's a criminal revolution against us, we, the people. Finally, here tonight, Obama targets technology and human rights abuses. Talk about a sickening, disgusting, ridiculous joke. CNN is reporting that he's putting out a new executive order to try to attack Coney. Can't get Congress to pass a law to freeze assets of anybody in Africa they claim is working with him? Well, just have Obama sign an executive order, and he, 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 he sources County 2012, and the guy running around naked in the street is a great, uh, great situation, and it authorizes sanctions and visa bans against anyone who commits or facilitates grave human rights abuses via information technology. And it goes on. It says, that means governments that spy on people without warrants, but the U.S., of course, is exempt. These are people that admit they're spying on you illegally. It's a felony, but they don't care. They're saying now they're going to shut down and seize infrastructure and take over any private companies in the U.S. that they claim are working with Joseph Coney. I could be arrested tomorrow, and, and, and they could say that, uh, you know, there's a PrisonPlanet.tv membership that Joseph Coney has. I mean, anything. This is all part of the out-of-control power-grabbing of this criminal bureaucracy. The new Atrocities Prevention Board, who needs Congress? We have a Rural Affairs Board. Who needs Congress for war? Obama just launches it with the UN. The new Atrocities Prevention Board, will they stop all the atrocities our criminal government commits in Iraq and everywhere else? We'll meet for the first time on Monday at the White House. Well, thank God they're there. Obama also announced he's expanding the work of American advisors in Uganda, helping pursue the Lord's Resistance Army and its leader, Joseph Coney. Oh, really? Off the Joseph Coney propaganda film, told you that was coming, who are accused of widespread atrocities. Let me look inside you, Coney. Today, I can announce that our advisors will continue their efforts to bring this madman to justice and to save lives. <laughs> Let's send Al-Qaeda in to murder 40,000 in Libya and line blacks up and slaughter them. Coney hadn't been seen in like six years. They're just going to send in giant slaughter forces. The government of Uganda under globalist backings killed over a million people. And they got all the trendies hopping around. <laughs> oh, man, this country is in. So, whoa, we have got total scientific psychological warfare control freaks running things. Um, continuing, though, I've got one more story. The Examiner reports, White House, no White House staff involved in prostitution scandal. We didn't need the Justice Department who shipped drugs in and guns out of the country and Fast and Furious to check into that or who, you know, hand out uh, non-prosecutions on people like uh, John Corzine to investigate that. Uh, no, no, the White House says it, it, it's investigated. There's no point in getting into the details of an internal review except to say that it was concluded by the White House lawyer. And uh, that is the uh, total 
total transparency uh, of these people. So there you go. White House said so. Oh, but one, one final little tidbit. Uh, the, the, the tens of billions given uh, to GM of taxpayer money. I told you to move to Brazil, China, Eastern Europe. Well, it's going well. The vault's built in China now. And now Cadillacs, the Denver uh, newspaper's reporting it. And also the Detroit News is reporting it. Well, it's being reported everywhere. GM to build 2013 Cadillac XTS in China this year. And hey, it's one thing if GM wants to move there, but when it's government run and with your tax money, you're paying to have your job shipped out. <laughs> Isn't that just special? And it's just going to get better. And by the way, you're going to pay for those national parks. You don't get to go swimming at them, you piece of trash. And to fly there, oh, your wife, your wife's only been touched by you the last 20 years. There's a pot belly who couldn't get a woman that they're a lot dependent on. He's going to be going down the panties right now. <laughs> and the troops are going to breathe some DU and die real good, too, because good people run, good people run, good people run the country. And I apologize that I've ever talked bad about our loving government. It's good people. It's good people. Let me give you a daily quote. Action speaks louder than words, but not nearly as often. Mark Twain, that's right. Words give meaning to action, and we are all about action, and we have moved mountains here with your help and your focus. We'll come back with somebody else who's had action. We are destroying the fascist fake greenies as the degenerate slime they are. And there's been a giant event as big as the Copenhagen uh, situation going down and the Climate Gate emails coming out and we're going to talk to Mark Moreno, one of our favorite guests, straight ahead, right here on the Infowars Nightly News. Transmission will continue. Coming up, breaking news from Mark Moreno as the rats are fleeing the ship on the Infowars Nightly News. I just want to talk to everybody for a minute about CISPA. Um, this is getting ready to go to the House next week to be voted on, and there's a reason we should all be really concerned about this. Um, it basically would nullify our privacy rights to our information on the internet in a whole bunch of different ways. It's going to go in and say that the government and the military can see your information, have your share your information with companies. Companies can share with them. Everybody can just spread that all around without a court order. So used to be where they would actually have to follow an oversight chain of command on that. Now, basically, they wouldn't need it because if what you're doing is somehow deemed a cyber threat, then they can just have your information. It's broad and it's vague. But even with that being said, having read through this a couple times, I keep getting stuck on this one point. Quote, including information pertaining to the protection of a system or network from A, efforts to degrade. So what's degrade? What do you have to do to degrade a system or network? If I sit here right now and I tell you Facebook is a sucky corporation and basically they have an abysmal track record of protecting their users privacy their information there's all kinds of articles out there about if you upload anything to Facebook you, and then you sign the user agreement they can use your pictures for advertising and it becomes their sole property or whatever okay well who's buying these products who's buying our university products anymore who's employing these people about the only employer I see of the standard American graduate is the government. Again, you're assuming that a persuasive argument is brainwashing. <laughs> brainwashing involves specific techniques of the manipulation. Okay, well, what are, okay, good. Well, well, you're the expert. What is brainwashing then? Okay, you can't. You don't have. You don't have facts. You don't have. You don't even have the theory. That well, but you don't have the data. You don't have the facts. As far as, as what? As far as, as, far as, as anything you said. Anything. What I said was that this seemed reminiscent of a communist-style propaganda poster, and that a liberal arts degree equals a brainwashed certificate minus $80,000. One of the things that's involved in brainwashing, you know, classic, okay. you know, North Korea was where the first, okay, okay. term first came, you know, prisoners coming back from North Korea, yeah. is that what you do, and it's the only way you could do it, okay, okay you isolate people, mm -hmm. you keep them in a constant state of heightened anxiety. Okay. Okay. 
And one of the ways you do that is you isolate them. I mean, you physically isolate them. Mm -hmm. Human beings cannot survive emotionally in isolation. Welcome to InfoWars, I'm Kyle Phillips. Today we're gonna to be talking about a specific issue, which is the military doing training exercises in big cities across the United States. The reason I'm bringing this up today is because over the course of this week in Chicago, they're going to be doing some military exercises in Chicago using Black Hawk helicopters and who knows what else. And this is not the first time this has happened. They've done this many times. They did this a few years ago in Chicago where they had Polish troops training to take down, you know, sovereign citizens and things like that. And, you know, why is this such a big issue? Why do we care if the military is training in our cities? Well, first of all, I don't think this was a training exercise, especially in this specific instance. If you're going to fly three Black Hawk helicopters through the middle of the downtown loop, around buildings and stuff, you're going to tell people. People are going to freak out about that, and you know they're going to freak out about that. They're going to think there's a terrorist attack happening. They're not sure if a building's about to fall on them. You're putting people into panic, and you're doing it on purpose. They should have told, if this was a military exercise, they should have and would have told people about it ahead of time. Basically having a tantrum. Isn't it strange, though, how parents are expected to control their children without handcuffing them. I mean, if a parent put flex cuffs on their six-year-old, they'd probably have their child taken away for child abuse, but somehow it's okay for the school and the police to do that. And this is only one example. Ten disgusting examples of very young school children being arrested, handcuffed, and brutalized by police. And what are they being arrested for? Uh, things like uh, giving another student a wedgie, uh, burping in gym class, spraying perfume on yourself, uh, throwing paper airplanes, uh, sassing off to the teacher, really just about anything. And by the way, this isn't the only way in which teachers are going too far. This also came up recently. Public schools in action. Teacher refuses to let kindergartner use bathroom during test. A teacher makes her sit in her own excrement, gives her trash bag to wrap around herself afterward. 1946, the U.S. government started, started the weapons testing, and it ended up going on until 1958. And in 1946, they went to the people of Bikini. This is where we get the bikini from, because the French designer who, who um, designed the bikini thought that it would inflame the passions of men like the atom bomb. So tasteful, isn't it? Isn't that how you just shove it right in your face? always been doing it. Notice also Spongebob is from Bikini Bottom. Why do you think Spongebob's from Bikini Bottom? Because where are you going to find a talking sponge somewhere that's been irradiated like the Marshall Islands? So they went to them and they said, look, we have this power to do this. These bombs were dropped in Japan. We want to study this power so that we can harness it, use it for the good of mankind. And it's the same line that's still is to everybody, right? Having these weapons is going to be good, it's going to be good, it's going to bring peace, it's good, it's good, it's so good. So they, they told the Marshallese people that, and a 99% Christian country, naturally they wanted to do something that would be for the good of mankind, and so they agreed. They were removed from their islands, they were never told exactly what was going to be going on. They didn't tell them how many tests they were going to do, or how long they were going to be removed from their land. Or that, hey, this stuff's going to be around forever, and you're probably not going to be able to go to your land for a really long time. And the people of Bikini still can't go to their land. So uh, they agreed to it. They started dropping bombs. In under 10 minutes, I will show you my never-before-seen analysis of the Robert F. Kennedy assassination. Operatives who funneled RFK into a predetermined kill zone. Photographic evidence puts three senior CIA operatives at the scene of Robert F. Kennedy's assassination. Moments after the shooting, agent number two, Gordon Campbell, walks from the direction of the pantry with a small container in his hand. Here is agent one again, David Morales. Here, agent two, Gordon Campbell, stands in the ballroom hours before the shooting with a third agent. Bradley Ayers worked with these men at JM Wave and first confirmed my identification of Morales. Very, very much. Hello, friends, and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. My name is Samuel DeGangi. You guys know me as Sam I.B. DeGangi. I did not know that you were allowed to enter more than one video in this, or I would have done so. So to the people at the Alex Jones Show, do not take it as lack of initiative. I did not know you were allowed to do so. 
Thank you for running this contest, and thank you for all the hits that you've gotten so many of us. I want to mention to new viewers that might have only found me from the Jones Show, um, the flag is crooked. It's the, L, it's the Ron Paul flag. That flag only gets straightened when I have good Ron Paul news, and it's crooked for a reason. All right, guys, on we are to the news, regardless of how you found me. Welcome to the Correct Views. Michigan unleashes armed raids on small pig farmers, forces farmer to shoot all of his pigs. Uh, Mike Adams, Natural News, founded from InfoWars. Um, let me ask you a question. L look at these pigs. Look at them. Just look at them. Particularly the one that looks like he's smiling on the top, uh, it'll be your left, of the screen. Listen to this. Natural News can now confirm that the Michigan Department of Natural Resources has in total violation of the Fourth Amendment. Oh, that's just the Constitution. Who cares? Conducted two armed raids on pig farmers in the state, one in Kalkaska County at Fife Lake and the other at Chebuyagan County. This is awful. Hello and welcome to this special InfoWars transmission. Thank you for joining me. Today I wanted to discuss the transhumanist movement and how it will play a part in the UN Agenda 21. First off, I'll take you through a brief history of transhumanism and Agenda 21. We'll talk about the future implications this will have on both individual and property rights, and how it will potentially lead us further into a collectivist controlled world system. And afterwards we'll discuss possible solutions and a call to action. Welcome everyone to an Australian segment for the Alex Jones Show, right here on PrisonPlanet.tv. For those who don't know too much about what's going on in Australia, I'll be giving you an overview of what has happened and what is happening in this country. Even though Australians are starting to wake up, we're still dealing with a lot of the issues that our brothers and sisters are worldwide. Fluoridated water, chemtrails, poisonous vaccinations, and concentrated media ownership are only some of the issues that are part of the global agenda that people like Alex Jones is trying to warn us about. We don't see the US government as representation of you, the good people of the United States. We understand that the USA has been hijacked and is being used as the springboard for the new world order. Many us believe here in Australia that our government is the lapdog of any US administration. In fact, Australia might as well be the 51st state of the United States, or, as Obama would have it, the 58th. Just wonderful to be back in Oregon, and over the last 15 months we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states, I think one left to go. our biggest contest ever and we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants so you say you want to fight the new world order why if you were on the radio if you were Alex Jones you'd really kick some globalist ass well here's your chance we're hiring not one but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube. And you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. 
We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the Info War. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your metal. enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and uh, well we resist them via a free market system hello my fellow info warriors alex jones here introducing you to the pro pure family of gravity fed filters now you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes fluoride lead mercury arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch, is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalists obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. 
and I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure gravity filter system. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water, uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health, and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. Pro Pure is the name. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we've got some good news. Two and a half years ago, when the Climate Gate emails came out, the known wanton fraud in them that they were hiding the decline in temperature in the last 15 years, I likened it to the Imperial Death Star being blown up by Luke Skywalker. But there's still an Imperial fleet. But something has happened with the corny Star Wars analogies. I liken this to the Emperor being thrown down the reactor shaft. This is a big deal, and it's breaking here. It just broke in the last few minutes at climatedepot.com. And Mark Moreno joins us. I had him on about, uh, in fact, guys, we printed the article from last week, I forgot, where the uh, Forbes writer says burn down people's houses or take their property uh, if they don't pay Al Gore all the money. Uh, I, I was going to get him on about that article, and then they're announcing giant spy satellites to track our individual carbon footprints and come after us. And they're announcing they're going to shut down part of national parks because humans are invasive. I wanted to get him on about that and the Agenda 21 uh, using bailout money to ship the Cadillac production to China. Oh, it's, they're not just going to China. Bailout money did it. I was going to cover the America-hating, free market-hating agenda. But then, right as we are about to get him on, ClimateDepot.com alert Gaia scientist James Lovelock reverses himself. This is big. This is rats leaving the sinking ship of Man Bear Pig. And joining us is Mark Moreno, that Newsweek magazine called the king of skeptics. Well, that's a, it's good to be skeptical. <laughs> the king of not believing known liars. Uh, they did a cover story in Rolling Stone. They called him one of the leaders of the climate killers. He needs to be arrested. He's very evil. He, of course, has advised Congress, Senator Inhofe, and along with Lord Mox, is probably you know, the twin dynamic duo of exposing the, 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 the socialist globalist move to take over the planet through their fake environmental movement. I mean, this is so big. That's why this issue is so big. It's the whole world government agenda. And as Lord Moncton has pointed out, it distracts us from real environmental issues like overfishing, toxic waste dumping. None of us want to hurt the earth. No, it distracts us with pay your pittance, pay your indulgences to get out of purgatory to Al Gore, who, you know, owns part of the carbon exchange. Mark Moreno here. I feel like I should have champagne right now, like I did on air a few years ago when the climate stuff came out. Day one, I popped champagne. We ran the media blockade. We got it out. Do you agree with me that uh, this is the emperor down the mine shaft, or is this just Darth Vader grabbing the emperor, preparing to throw him down? A lot of Star Wars analogies. Yeah, I mean, this this is uh, equivalent to, yeah, them blowing up the Death Star. This is it. I ordered the equivalent of Jim Jones bailing out of the People's Temple cult before he drank the Kool-Aid, before they drank the Kool-Aid. He's trying to save the other cultists. James Lovelock today, and making this announcement, and this is broken, this is amazing. One of the key founders of Climate Alarm, James Lovelock, the inventor of the Gaia Earth Theory, that the Earth is a living, breathing organism, which has spawned so many Earth worshippers since then, has come out and announced that he was wrong about global warming. He was alarmist about global warming. He now admits that he didn't know, understand the climate. They thought they knew it 20 years ago. This is huge. And the fact that MSNBC is breaking the news. Now, Climate Depot, we've been following this guy for years. We actually go back to 2010 
and show the beginnings of his growing skepticism. He started praising skeptics. He started backing away then. But now his new book's coming out, and apparently in James Lovelock's new book, he completely walks away. This guy made Al Gore look moderate. That's how serious he was. In fact, James Lovelock, as, early, as recently as 2007, had said that global warming would doom us all and, quote, billions of us will die. There'll be a few breeding pairs of people that will survive in the Arctic, unquote. That's how alarmist this guy was. He is now bailing on the movement. He's making a mockery of it. He's, he's saying that he's admitting he's wrong, and he's saying how so few scientists are willing to do it. So in a way, we should really be praising this guy for having the courage to admit his failure. Why are they beginning to bail the sinking ship? I mean, why are they beginning to climb out of it? A couple different reasons. One of the UN top scientists a few years ago now warned of coming global cooling on the Earth. Uh, and he's as of the possibility of global cooling. And this was a man who said that the oceans weren't showing the warming. Uh, and this went on, and this caused such a stir is at a UN meeting in Europe that this happened. And this may be one of the little peeks into what's going on here. They're fearful that the sun is going to take a downturn, that ocean cycles are going to shift, and that we may be going through several decades. There have been several peer-reviewed studies predicting this, and they're trying to bail out now before they have egg all over their face as global temperatures fail to warm. And what they're already doing, we've already caught what people are openly calling fraud at NASA with James Hansen and fraud at the, um, at the University of East Anglia that keeps the temperature data for the United Nations. They're now retroactively changing past temperatures uh, to make recent years warmer than the past. Again, this would be like a, a Wall Street firm changing their books from 10 years ago uh, to lower their profits to show that profits are going up when in fact they're declining. So they're, what they're doing is they're changing the historic record so they can say, hey, look, things are actually uh, warming now when before they showed cooling. So that could be what's happening and they can only adjust temperatures so much. They can only tinker with the data so much to, and get away with that. So now, what we're seeing is people bailing. And we've seen this before. We've talked about it. A man named Dennis Rancourt in Canada, uh, a left winger who's come out and said, you know, global warming is nothing but a, uh, a, a fantasy of the, of the wealthy Western middle class. And he now says that it's taking away from real environmentalism. So many environmentalists are angry and upset that this movement fell flat. And for James Lovelock, the king of the entire movement. This is the man. This was the man who, who basically you could say the, they call him the father of the modern green movement. Came, came big in the 1960s, has such followers, and was the original alarmist on global warming. He is now bailing out. And this is huge. And again, for MSNBC to be the one reporting it, there's some irony here. The founders of the movement bail out, with the, and it's reported by the media that helped create it. But here's so the it's, problem. It's you foreshadowed this a few months ago when you were in South Africa on my show via Skype with Lord Moncton. You said, yeah. look out. I predict they're going to fully bail on this and Al Gore, because yeah. you can see the signs, and jump to... Uh, species extinction and just power grab everywhere. I mean, if they've turned off most of the water to Oregon and, and northern and central California over a fish that isn't even indigenous, yeah. my God, I mean, here in Austin, they steal property for warblers and and uh, for uh, salamanders. It's all made up. Uh, so, I mean, look out. They're in the lifeboats. Where are they going in the escape pods? Yes, and I, your excellent point, Alex. I don't want to mislead anyone by implying that they're giving up on wacky environmentalism. Uh, I don't. I haven't seen James Lovelock's new book, but it's ultimately it's what's happening here is many environmental scientists are bailing on global warming. They're going to roll global warming into the larger issue of sustainable development. Coming up, Earth Summit in Rio, which I'll actually be attending with Lord Moncton uh, and Senator James Inhofe from Oklahoma may be attending as well. Uh, so we're going to have some fun down at this Rio conference at the UN, and because it's going to be a, a new festival where they're going to be introducing species extinction. They're going to be go talking about sustainable development, land use policies. Again, they're talking about a scope that could control every aspect of human endeavors, from agriculture to transportation to um, your, any kind of land use issue to species uh, to... Um, and let's be uh, clear. Let's be clear. Let I me mean, just interrupt. I want you to go back. Last year, as you know, they had massive fines for grass dust on a farm. If a yeah. barn was dusty, that's it. You're, you're going to be shut down. And, and Congress is having to act. I mean, this is about a total shutdown. They mean business. If you're not with the in crowd, you're going to have your business or farm shut down. I mean, these, these are vicious authoritarians. Yes, and that, yeah, this is what this is what they're looking to have 
a international monitoring agency. One of the other stories at Climate Depot today is about the carbon sat surveillance satellite. It aims to hunt down climate violators globally in just five years' time. And we've had the German climate advisor recently come out and say that we need a CO2 budget for every man, woman, and child on the planet. And guess what? Every single American's already over the budget, so we're going to be punished. We're going to be stripped of our carbon ability to emit carbon emissions. Um, and they're coming after it. This is bean counters gone crazy. We saw this in the 20th century. You can put any face you want on it uh, from all the different tyrannical rules, but this is what we're talking about. He who controls carbon controls life. He who controls land use controls life. He who controls our environment controls life. At the same time, Alex, just last week, Gallup released another poll after uh, the, la the latest figures are hundreds of billions of dollars spent promoting man-made climate fears. We are looking at uh, people still put global warming at the bottom, Americans put global warming at the bottom of environmental concerns. And that's good news. And they realize that. People like James Lovelock see a movement dying. Among environmental issues, global warming dead last, according to the latest Gallup data. That is huge. All the hype, exactly. all, the money, all the Oscars, all the Nobel Prizes. And they can't even get people to be convinced it's an important environmental problem. Well, it is a big victory. They're regrouping with new scams and new things to scare us with to, you know, so we can pay them money and worship them as our Gaia gods. But at the same time, if their entire priesthood of this new religion is discredited, and of course, in the background, it's an anti-human religion of eugenics, then where are their new leaders going to be? When they've already been caught crying wolf, it's going to be an ice age by 2000. And well, then by the matter. 80s, it, it, they, it's going to be melting ice caps. They do that without, they do that, on, they turn on a dime. They could care less about that. They, we had people like Steven Snyder warning of global, coming global ice age in the 70s without a problem with the late 80s. He's warning of global warming and, and record heat. They have no shame when it comes to that. The one thing they've learned, and this is someone like Paul Ehrlich, the eugenicist, the Mr. Overpopulation. Fears. He was making predictions in 1970 of 10 years away, 15 years away. The problem was he was still alive. He's still alive today, but he was still alive when he made these predictions. So what the global warming alarmists are doing, and I'm assuming what the new Sustainable Development Earth Summit is going to do, they're going to make predictions much further into the future when everyone who's making the predictions will be long dead. So they have a learning curve. They're getting that part, but they have no shame whether they're worried about overpopulation, deforestation, global cooling, global warming. They don't care. They turn on a dime. They, they act as though it never happened. And then they come out with studies. They'll now tell you with a straight face that they never predicted global cooling in the 70s. There's probably some who will claim the overpopulation fears were overblown, despite the fact we have the quotes. We have the quotes from the first Earth Day at Climate Depot. I posted these. They are the most absurd, laughable, asinine quotes. Yet the, yet the people making these quotes, people like Paul Ehrlich, are still winning awards today. So they have no shame when it comes to being wrong, to being alarmist. They just tr shift and go on to the next thing, and the compliant media reports it as though it's all new and shocking information. They never report their track record. Now, Mark, let me raise this point to you. What's going to happen to James Lovelock with those rats that are not leaving uh, yeah, the sinking ship? Uh, I want to raise this point. Last week, we wrote a story directly linking to the Forbes article that had been out for a couple days, and I guess yeah. nobody seemed to think it was a problem, to have Forbes, which does some pretty good writing sometimes, is very respected. That's what makes it even more dangerous. Climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. He said, you know, let's find out where they live, quote, let's make them pay, and when their houses are burning, let's not put them out. Let's take their property. I mean, he's pretty much saying burn them down, and Forbes is putting this out like, it's normal. This makes the new Black Panther Party saying, let's start killing some white people sound tame. Yeah. I mean, this is so wild and so desperate. And then we added to it the cornucopia of them saying, we need green fascism. We need to arrest these people. We need well, to actually, lock them up. I mean, yeah, what? Lovelock himself called for suspending democracy to deal with global warming. I, that's, I think it's one of the things he had called for in the past. I mean, these that's their first impulse. We have Tom Friedman in the New York Times praising uh, the, the Chinese uh, political system because they don't have the messiness of democracy. They can do what's right for the people. They're openly admitting they don't like democracy and the free will of the people because why? Because in their minds, the masses, the unwashed masses get in the way of their Harvard educated PhD minds that are so intelligent and know so well what is best for the people. How dare 
the mom of three kids living in Iowa has a voice in how they're going to manage this economy. I have two masters, a PhD. This is what the people from the New York Times and, and these other people think. It becomes a, you know, elitism that comes over. This hey, is Al Gore, money or the earth is destroyed. We're saving you, damn it. <laughs> That's right. And they really believe they are. And you keep talking about religion and the cult. The Washington Post hosted an Earth Day article yesterday, and I will give you a quote from it. Quote, they called it Earth Day Theology. This is the Washington Post newspaper, and it said, quote, God is judging our sins against the planet, and she is very, very angry about it, unquote. They actually are openly putting God into it, and, that, and yet they're the ones who come after the, you know, the religious right, if you will, and make all sorts of accusations. It's the, it's the left that has turned and transformed into many of these predictions, into what you could, could only be described as cult-like. And they're as making the, themselves, the, exactly, they're making themselves the center of their religion. Now, remember Kerry Norgard, uh, the professor who said, treat people who don't believe in it. We have all these other professors saying, treat us, medicate us. They then said, oh, she didn't write that. It was a mistake. They memory hold it. Then we found a university she was at three years ago before they expunged it. And unfortunately, this next report didn't get as much traction as our first that went viral everywhere uh, at Drudge Report and other places. We found one where she wrote a letter to the president saying, oh, get rid of freedom, get rid of democracy. Please don't do what the people want. They're too stupid. And this was a letter by her to him on her website. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, I mean, obviously she meant, you know, treat us, medicate us. I, I mean, it, the deception of these people and the fact that they're so arrogant. Yeah, and also Department of Homeland Security in a new February uh, 2012 report reiterating its call for the Department of Homeland Security Environmental Justice Units. And they're going to be empowered to oversee regulations with local government uh, to go after in 11 federal agencies. They're going to be going after environmental crimes. So we are not very far. And again, this is all for the good of the planet. And by the way, all Homeland Security, uh, TSA is involved, undercover people, yeah. bag searches for the earth. And I mean, imagine the hell of the feds turned loose in everybody's backyard. This is a nightmare. Yeah, and not, not only that, but the EPA, Lisa Jackson was recently over in Europe praising the upcoming Earth Summit and talking what she's calling environmental governance. Other people use the phrases like global governance, Al Gore's phrase. Uh, and this is what they're seeking. They're basically saying the Earth can't handle it. People are too stupid. Democracy is destroying the, the, the planet. We, the enlightened intellectuals, need to lead the unwashed masses. And where have we heard that? Think about this, though. Everybody that wants to get into the environmental police on record are these acolytes, and it's the majority opinion to imprison us, burn our houses down. This is uniform people whose leaders talk about burning houses down and arresting uh, Lord yes. Moncton. I've seen some say arrest you, arrest me, all because we know they're full of crap. I mean, these are authoritarian uh, creatures. I mean, it's, I don't know what else to say. And that's all you can say. And they admit it openly. You know, we have a whole report on all the stuff going back that people went into strangle skeptics in their bed, talking points memo, talking about executing skeptics, Grist magazine calling for, for uh, Holocaust style Nuremberg trials for global warming skeptics. So when someone like the Forbes writer named Steve Zwick mentions that about letting houses burn down and this is the way we can find them, then he says later, well, it's just hyperbolic. I didn't really mean it. Well, no, if, if it was an isolated incident, Someone could get away with that. But as you mentioned, every time we look into this, it follows the same pattern. It's always about stifling dissent, shutting him down. Al Gore, back in 1992, lobbied Ted Koppel not to allow a skeptical scientist on Nightline, Richard Lindzen from MIT, because he said the debate was settled. In 1992, they were trying to silence skeptics before global warming even got up. Oh, the that's ground. another point. They'll never debate. Uh, Al Gore won't debate. Cameron won't debate. None of them will debate. That's not a good sign. In fact, USA Today reported that ClimateGate uh, scientist Michael Mann of the UN, the man who made the totally defrauded uh, hockey stick temperature graph, which showed temperatures stable for ni 900 years, and then they spike up in the 20th century, has been totally, de totally destroyed scientifically. They say he's out now on a book tour to, to, to fight the skeptics and debate them, yet he won't take questions. He won't appear on stage with any skeptic. These people live like paper tigers their entire lives claiming that they have all the answers, claiming they're not wrong, yet they've never once submitted themselves to that kind of scrutiny or cross-examination. It's an embarrassment. Yeah, we've invited them all on, and 
sometimes you get a sniveling response like, I will lower myself to your level. By... Well, hey, if I'm so low, come on and cream me. <laughs> exactly. And that's, and that's what happens is they make all sorts of absur assertions that, that can be so easily scientifically refuted using the latest peer-reviewed studies. And they know that. And if they show up, they would be destroyed within a few minutes. And, they, and that's the thing. They would never allow it. James Cameron, the Hollywood director, challenged uh, myself and the late Andrew Breitbart uh, and Anne, Anne uh, McElhaney from the, the Irish filmmaker to a debate in Colorado two years ago. I was on the plane flying out to Colorado for the debate when at the last minute James Cameron was convinced by his environmental allies to call off the debate because he was likely to not only lose, but lose badly. So this was a man who said he wanted to call out the skeptics in the street like high noon and have a shoot off, challenged us to a debate. I flew out there and upon landing in, in Colorado, find out the debate was canceled by Cameron. That is the, you know, he went from being uh, uh, yeah, king of the sea, king, what's the stupid phrase in the movie? Uh, king of the ocean to chicken of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey let me find. stop you. Let me stop you. Again, said he wanted to call people out and shoot them. Their entire imagery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, their entire nomenclature, their entire, they're the ones that are always about violence and arrest and let's grab them and treat them. Oh, I didn't mean that, but her other letter, suspend freedom, do whatever you want, dictatorship. I mean, it is a frothing group of miscreant power grabbing creatures who've got to be met head on. And I'm sick of them. Every time MSNBC's here or Nightline or any of these publications, anytime they're here, they say, aren't you going to cause violence? Aren't you going to, and I'm like, I'm not calling for violence. I want my taxes lowered. I want America back. I want yeah. freedom. I, I, I mean, they obsess on how, and then NBC's caught editing the Trayvon Martin audio uh, of George Zimmerman to make it sound like he's racist. They're caught uh, pr uh, w w with the White House, with people implanted uh, in the protest group to hype it up. I mean, it's clear. They're the provocateurs. They're the people trying to get America fighting with themselves. They're the people calling for arresting us. Uh, these people are criminals. Uh, I, I, and this is what's happened is across the world, we're seeing this in country after country where debate, dissent. In Australia, they ram through these climate bills despite overwhelming opposition by the public. Uh, and then we're finding now slowly, but slowly, people are fighting back against these totalitarian tactics and streaks. We saw the same thing happen, by the way, in the U.S. Congress. Nancy Pelosi ramrodded the climate bill through, and, only, and then, of course, it went on to fail in the Senate. That was actually the birth, that and the health care bill, were the birth of the U.S. Tea Party. Because they rammed these bills through, there were spontaneous reactions across the country. And this is when we saw global warming become politically, support for global warming become unacceptable. Democratic senators, congressmen showing up at town halls, being booed, jeered, and laughed at when they tried Mark. to claim there was a consensus on global warming, and including Al Franken, who then said he wouldn't support the climate bill. The Democrats lost Al Franken as a supporter of the global warming bill. That's how strong grassroots action can overcome even totalitarian impulses. And that's my next point. Are you not worried like I am? I mean, I can't stand Barack Obama, but let's face it, Mitt Romney uh, has supported carbon taxes, helped write uh, the uh, health care bills, been anti-gun. He may be singing a different tune now, but he's bought and paid for by the same crony interest. Yeah. That, that, uh, and, and just like under Bush, everybody's going to go to sleep if Mitt Romney gets in. In a way, as bad as Obama's been, he's finally gotten people to wake up. Yes, and I, I, yeah, I, I, this is an issue that's very close, to, very close to my heart. I, when we think of how far we've come on environmentalism and global warming, to end up with Mitt Romney is a travesty. Mitt Romney, you can look at where he stands right now. He can say whatever he wishes. He's got a book out that sounds very much like Al Gore. At one point, he was the only Republican that Al Gore praised for belief in global warming last summer. And beyond that, who is surround? Who is um, Mitt Romney surrounding himself with? Uh, he's people like James Connaughton, a former Bush warmist who praised the United Nations science, praised the United Nations pro uh, uh, science process. This is a man that Mitt Romney appears to be taking in as a close advisor uh, on global warming. It's a disaster. Warmed over Bush warmest. And who's the number one vice presidential pick? Condi Rice. What did Condi Rice say in a recent book? She talked about how she laments the fact that George Bush didn't more aggressively pursue global warming treaties with the United Nations. This is someone the Romney campaign likes to float out like, oh, wouldn't this be an exciting name as vice president? So on these issues, in many serious respects, it's better to have a Democrat proposing them 
because they're easier. Republicans will, will oppose it on, by, on partisan ground. Partisanship is probably the greatest friend of liberty we have today. If John McCain had been elected in 2008, we would have global warming cap and trade if he wanted it, because Republicans won't oppose the Republican president. They will, a knee-jerk style, oppose the Democrat. And that's why, in many regards, if Obama's going to try to do anything, it, it, the Republicans will be much more aggressive in opposing it. Now, the issue now is, of course, the EPA. And that's going to have to be done through funding, through lawsuits, and or a change in administration. But the problem is Mick Romney appears to be tepid at best on these issues. All right. We've only got about five, six minutes left here. And I want to just recap the big lies they've told, what they've been caught in, the U.N. admitting it, you know, Santa over there admitting it. But I wanted to bring your attention to two other articles. New Big Brother satellite to hunt down carbon criminals. And, and that's in uh, Europe that they're going to launch, uh, this, this, this yeah. billion-dollar thing. But... We already have the satellites here for years being used. I saw it in Colorado. Farmers built a barn they weren't supposed to. Uh, and, and then you dovetail this with human events reporting. They're shutting down areas of national parks. Most of the big public lands are shut off to humans, period, now. They're saying no horse rack, uh, horseback riding because it's bad. They're saying no boats, no fishing. I mean, right here, they really want to train us that all that federal land, that we're not allowed to touch it. Yeah, and this is you know this is all part of go back to the first Earth Summit Agenda 21, the first George Bush. This is all sort of outgrowth to that they're taking away nature from mankind. Humans are not considered part of nature. We're not allowed to enjoy it like the gnats, like the flies, like the mice, like the lions, like the tigers, like the bears, like the deers. We are somehow different. We're considered an invasive species, so we have to be blocked. We have to be choked out of the, out of these parks and out of these systems. And this has been happening. It's been a slow, gradual uh, thing over the years as more and more lands are off limits to off-roading, to fishing, to hiking, uh, to all kinds of outdoor recreation. And there's actually now, even the liberals are getting wind of this. There's actually books now about how children are separated from nature. And the only involvement they have with nature are scare videos, scare films about how it's all disappearing. So kids grow up in a complete computer generated environment of television and handhelds and computer and different playstations and they're completely devoid from nature because and then what happens is their only involvement with nature is some environmentalist or hollywood people scaring them about how nature is about to disappear and how nature uh is a uh you know some dark foreboding secret and what ends up happening is we're divorced from nature and you end up caring less about those things which you're not part of. So in a way, it's a perverse environmentalism by keeping everyone out of parks, by keeping us out of recreating in these parks, it's gonna cause more environmental destruction in the end because we are no longer tied to them emotionally and physically. It's, and some of the leftists are realizing this, but it, you know, at, at the same time, uh, this is all steam, all steam ahead with limiting human access to these parks. Well, up on screen, we have one of the congressional maps from the mid-1990s that Dr. Kaufman put together from the U.N. documents. And right where they've got a spot of red south of Austin is where they've taken a bunch of property from people and forced them to sell it their adverse possession. And about half the country is completely off human limits. They've actually done these biospheres in other areas and expanded them and uh, these reserves. And then you've got the yellow areas that are restricted use and the tiny green areas that where you're allowed to uh, you know, go around and do things about 10% of the country. I, I, I mean, this is so dangerous and basically just turns the whole country and the whole world into a prison and only the good little environmentalists with badges are allowed to. I was in college with a girlfriend in a place called Hamilton Pool is where a creek comes into a, a cave that's fallen in. It's like a cenote. Guys, you can probably Google a photo of Hamilton Pool. And it, I, I, you know, I took off the day one day. It was like a Wednesday or something. And we're laying out on a little gravel beach. There's, there's a waterfall. It's like something out of uh, you know, Gilligan's Island. Very beautiful. And I'm sitting there with my girlfriend. And the Nature Conservancy slash Sierra Club, they all have their badges. They come in on a tour, and they walk in front of us, and they all look just like the classic hippie, know-it-all scientist. And they walked in front of us and looked at us like we weren't there. There was like 10 other people out there sunbathing. And they said, they shouldn't be here. My God, can you believe the, the invasiveness of this? Oh. And, and I, was like, I was like, don't talk to me like I'm not here, because this went on where they sat there like we were animals, and because they had little pinheads, they were smarter than I am. Yeah. I mean, I mean, these people, it's like a religion. Well, you watch MSNBC. All they do is talk about how everyone's an idiot but them. I mean, it's, it's, you've got to be around them on Capitol Hill, but it's incredible. And that told me everything 
I needed to know. They thought humans swimming in a pool was bad. But, I mean, that thing is full of all sorts of fish, snapping turtles, you name it. They're totally, animals want to be around humans. Well, it goes even worse, Alex. When I, I worked with a UK charity years ago and doing my Amazon rainforest documentary and went down and talked to the indigenous tribes of South America. And to a tribe, every single one of them wanted a better life, lower uh, infant mortality and longer life expectancy and modern medicine for them and their family and their children and their babies. But if you talk to the environmentalists and the intellectual left, they would all claim that these people want to be left alone and to live as though they've lived for thousands of years in primitive huts made of dung with dirt floors and, and malaria and dysentery and, and a, a nasty, brutish, short life. But the reality is when you go there, they want progress, they want civilization. And here's the weird thing, uh, this group in Europe, in UK, actually sent a bunch of college kids that were just default cultural liberals out to places in Africa and other places. Before they went on the trip, they showed them pictures of, of tribal people holding a cell phone. And they asked the kids what they thought of it. And the kids all thought, oh, how outrageous, Western commercialism, they're infecting these people, that's outrageous, they're ruining their way of life. And, and, and then they went there. And after they spent a couple of weeks living with the indigenous people, they showed them the same picture again when they got back. And the kids understood that these aren't people like Walter Williams, the economist I interviewed for my documentary said, they want to treat indigenous people as though they're, they're, they're animals in a zoo that white wealthy Westerners can come by, look at them and say, oh, look, isn't that neat that people still live like that and then fly home. Exactly. The they need power plants. They need medicine when their kid gets bitten by a snake. They need that stuff. And plus, if you say it's overpopulated, every study shows whether it's a, a African country, whether it's a Latin country, whether it's Asian, Japan or Europe, after industrialization, two parents start having about 1.4 children. So population goes down. The answer is industrialization if these eugenicists think there's too many people. But it's a very similar way. They don't see humans as being part of nature, and they don't see progress as being part of tribal life. And in fact, we had one environmentalist named Gar Smith who lamented the introduction of electricity in Africa. He talked about how people used to play the drums and be so happy. Well, he wasn't living in malaria-infested things where your children were dying and not even making it out of infancy. It just seemed like a neat concept for white, wealthy Westerners with emails and fax machines and air conditioning and heating and uh, and public transit and whatever. But like you, you said, I've talked to them. Once they go and at night, the clouds of stinging bugs and, and, and <laughs> snakes coming into the huts, they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, now I get it. And the people are like yeah. begging for food. It used to be called the the jungle, but they had they turned it into a nice the rainforest. And then again, to bring up uh, James Cameron again, he and his uh, main uh, star of Alien, um, Sigourney Weaver, went down to Brazil and opposed what President Lula again no no right wing reactionary uh, Lula the president down there Lula da Silva he opposed him. Hollywood actors went down to oppose the Brazilian government putting in hydroelectric plants. It would bring running water and electricity progress to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Brazilians. Instead, they went down there and said, these people don't want it. They need to continue to maintain their traditional way of well, life. Look, it's eugenics. Life. It's eugenics. And some of these guys are useful idiots. But the Pentagon came out with a new report saying industrial civilization threatens the power monopoly of these mega corporations. That's it. They want to shut everybody down. In closing, what are some of the biggest lies? Al Gore creating fake video uh, graphics of, of polar bears can't swim, saying they're basically all dead when the numbers have exploded, what, fivefold? Yeah, uh, saying the Himalayas would all melt, saying that... Uh, I, mean, have, yeah. I can't... There's 129 uh, you know, errors we found in the, since, the, since ClimateGate broke, and they actually maintain that. Climate Depot features that 129 and counting uh, of some of the main errors. You can't really say what are the big lies. The bottom line is polar bears are in danger. That's a huge lie. Mount Kilimanjaro is mounting, is melting due to mankind. Two lies are contained there. A, it's not melting. B, it's not due to mankind. Uh, and there's, it's not due to CO2 emissions. Ocean levels are rising. Uh, no, NASA's saying they're dropping. European space satellites show they're flat or dropping in the last 10 years. Uh, and Obama, by the way, takes credit for that. In 2008, he said his was going to be the presidency that sees the slowing of the rise of the oceans. Well, he did it. That's a promise kept for Obama. <laughs> NASA said sea levels have not risen in two years. The They're Himalayas dropping. were all going to melt. The, the Himalayas, well, that, that just keeps getting worse and worse for them. The Himalayas are gaining ice. New studies keep coming out, just making a mockery of the United Nations on that. And I have a report on my website that I released in Durban at the last UN, at South Africa, at the last UN conference. A to Z. Not only are their predictions failing to come true, but in many cases, Mother Nature has uh, is mocking them. They have egg on their face 
for these predictions. And we're talking everything from ocean heat content to species extinction to, uh, again, sea level to the different feedback mechanisms to uh, all these other factors contributing to, to, to temperature. And that one of them is volcanic dust. The lack of volcanic dust alone is a third or more of the, of the warming temperatures of the temperatures that we've had since the 1960s. And hundreds of factors have come together to make up our global temperature. And they're trying to say it's one uh, factor, CO2, what we exhale from our mouth. That is no longer scientifically- Well, hey, right. when we had a five-year drought from central to west Texas, which by the way, it usually is desert and pretty arid in some of these areas, they said it was because we weren't paying Al Gore money. But then now it's been flooding and it, we didn't pay Al Gore money. And the right. truth is I've gone and looked at the records. It's always going through these cycles. Yes, and that, the other big lies are, of course, that, oh, we've never had weather like this before. That is classic medieval witchcraft. We've never had weather like this till that witch moved in next door. We've never <laughs> had weather till that neighbor bought his SUV. They actually believe this. It's sick. You have meteorologists like Jeff Masters, the global warming alarmist, who says, in my lifetime, I've never seen weather like this. In my 30 years or whatever. First of all, that's nonsense. Second of all, go back. We have, we have, you go to Climate Depot. I've worked with a site called Real Science. We go back to the 1870s and we're making a mockery of all these claims about droughts and floods and unprecedented. Big tornadoes have declined dramatically since the 1970s global cooling scare. Hurricanes, we're at 30, 40 year historic lows for hurricane activities. The longest period before the Civil War since land falling hurricanes have hit the United States of any significance. This is one of the biggest mockeries, you name it, they're fa failing miserably. And this is why people like to bring it back to where we started. This is why people like James Lovelock, who at now at age 92, is walking himself back from alarm. Yeah. And they're now already starting the whisper campaign. Well, he's kind of old guy. And he's, you know, that's what the warmest. They're going to now destroy this man that they revered their entire well, life, let's hope their mentor. They will throw him under the bus if it serves their short-term purposes. Well, Mark, let's hope they don't burn his house down because he's now, right. <laughs> I mean, uh, let me throw you this curveball and then we'll let you go. And I really appreciate your time today. Um, uh, amazing in-depth report. We yeah. know that the science czar three years ago uh, calls for drugging the water to sterilize us. John P. Holdren in his book, Ecoscience, we know he said he wants to geoengineer the earth to save us from global warming. And they have been doing aluminum oxide, barium salt aircraft spraying test. We know that... Uh, he's called now for, you know, doing all this to save us. Bill Gates is heavily investing and doing stuff. I think they, you know, knowing them, they could actually try to create some bad weather conditions and then say it was because we didn't pay Al Gore money. I mean, if Bill Gates is investing hundreds of millions in this, look out. And, and Holdren, the first press conference he gave was, he could hardly talk, but d dribbling a sentence together. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about what kind of technology they could have to have any kind of significant, lasting, uh, or long-term effect on altering weather. Uh, and that would be interesting to see. I do know that they're all they're openly, as we've talked about in this program, trying to alter human human beings through human engineering, as Stephen Lau, the professor from uh, SUNY New York University, uh, wants to do. I don't know if they'll be able to do that through technology. I know this: if they could, they'll do just about anything they can to hang on to these fantasies into this into their power, which is ultimately what this is about. This is ultimately about global warmest telling you we need money and we need to regulate you in order to control the weather. And that is medieval witchcraft. Well, but I mean, Obama does. He got in and Gaia rewarded us by lowering the sea level. By lowering the sea level. And again, promise kept. He should be out there touting that. He has powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, if that's the case. Uh, and also temperatures have cooled. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure since it's, I could look back because they fluctuate up and down, but I think global, Obama's presided over global cooling, lowering of sea level, the massive expansion of Arctic ice, expansion of Antarctic ice. Obama is nothing if not a planet healer. And I say that, well, of course. Well, I've seen numbers of three to five fold increase all time record of polar bears invading human settlements. Yes, polar bears are through the roof since Obama's been elected. <laughs> He's truly a planet healer. We need to change our tune on him. Well, it started raining a bunch uh, when he came to Austin. Like Rick Perry prayed, it didn't work, but Obama, uh, he just flies over rainbows, pots of gold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark Moreno, climatedepot.com. We'll be talking to you when you're down in South Africa. Uh, you've already been in South Africa. You're going to be down in... Uh, South where? America. South America, that's right. Brazil, and down to Rio, yes. That, that's the next enclave in June. So they're going to be down there saving us in Rio, too.
Yeah, that'll be species. And then they're going to Qatar, the Middle East, for the next climate one in December. They just can't stop the partying. And, of course, Lord Moncton and I will be at that as well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. Wow. In-depth interview with Mark Moreno, ClimateDepot.com. Amazing information. This is the real authoritarian threat in the... 21st century. It is the big enchilada. People talk about the Muslim threat all day, and then you have Obama funding al-Qaeda to attack Libya and Syria and the rest of it. I don't know. This is the big threat. Big government, uh, these, these authoritarians who all they talk about is how they're going to savagely attack anyone that uh, doesn't go along with them. They've got to be stopped. Let me throw this in here. Uh, these eugenicist control freaks are adding fluoride to the water that's connected to bone cancer, you name it. Uh, they are adding all these other chemicals to the water. Uh, they are engaged in all this other, you know, type activity. You need to protect yourself. And it also supports our broadcast. We go to Infowars.com, look at the great ProPure water filters, and enter the promo code WATER. You get an additional 10% off the already lowest price. So please don't forget that these control freaks are adding hundreds of chemicals to the water under the name fluoride. And these filters uh, reduce much of it down to non-detectable levels and reduce the rest of it. You can put lake water in it and drink right out of them. And it's got a side-by-side -side comparison at InfoWars.com uh, on the uh, ProPure filters there on the shopping card uh, next to the leading competitors. So I want to thank all of you for checking out Pro. Pure at InfoWars.com to find the, the widest spectrum of the products and the lowest prices with the promo code WATER. Also, don't forget here that you can subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv, get all my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, the daily radio slash TV show that's live, the nightly news, uh, expanded extras that aren't on DVDs, uh, nine years plus now, since this April, nine years and counting of PrisonPlanet.tv or go to InfoWarsNews.com and find it there. And, and one membership for $5.95 a month is really six memberships because you can, uh, with your username and passcode, six people can log on with that. Be sure and make sure your username and passcode is not your bank username and passcode, though. Make one up when you do that or if you haven't, change your passcode at InfoWars. Uh, news.com or prisonplanet.tv and I've finally been adding some new videos to the rant section. I've been uh, kind of letting that lay fallow for a while but now we're going to be in there posting a lot of new ones, put a pretty wild one in there uh, last week and last time I checked it out a nice title of some numbers. Here, let's click on it. Go ahead and click on it because that was a little I, I need to I need to uh, name that for folks. Okay, that is it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And the good Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern at PrisonPlanet.tv. And don't forget, it'll also be on the radio, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern. And if you don't have a local AM or FM in your area, call your local station, tell them to pick up the show. That's how we get on all these great stations, over 100 now. We're also on Global Shortwave, WWCR, listings at InfoWars.com and the listen page. And then on top of that, uh, XM Channel 166. And remember... As always, this is teleprompter-free news. It's all a little noggin here. My guest and my research crew in there, so great job with the crew. I'm Alex Jones signing off. Until next time, bon voyage.